Giraffatitan, meaning giant giraffe, is a genus of sauropod dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period. It was originally named as an African species of Brachiosaurus. Giraffatitan is one of the largest animals known to have walked the Earth. Description Giraffatitan was a sauropod, one of a group of four legged, plant eating dinosaurs with long necks and tails and relatively small brains. It had a giraffe like build with long forelimbs and a very long neck. The skull had a tall arch anterior to the eyes, consisting of the bony nares, a number of other openings, and spatulate teeth. The first toe on its front foot and the first three toes on its hind feet were clawed. Traditionally, the distinctive high-crested skull has been seen as a characteristic of the genus Brachiosaurus to which Giraffatitan bransai was originally referred but because within the traditional Brachiosaurus material it is known only from Tanzanian specimens now assigned to Giraffatitan, it is possible that Brachiosaurus altithorax did not show this feature. Size For many decades, Giraffatitan was claimed to be the largest dinosaur known, but in the later part of the 20th century several giant Titanosaurians appear to have surpassed Giraffatitan in terms of sheer mass. However, Giraffatitan along with Brachiosaurus are still the largest dinosaurs known from relatively complete material. All size estimates for Giraffatitan are based on the specimen HMNSII, a sub-adult individual between 21.8 Euro 22.5 meters in length. Mass estimates are more problematic and historically have varied from as little as 15 tons to as much as 78 tons. These extreme estimates are now considered unlikely due to flawed methodologies. More recent estimates based on models reconstructed from bone volume measurements, which take into account the extensive, weight-reducing air sac systems present in sauropods, and estimated muscle mass, are in the range of 23 Euro 37 tons. However, HMNSII is not the largest specimen known but HMN152, represented by a tibia 13% larger than the corresponding material on HMNSII which might have attained 26 meters in length. History and Classification Giraffatitan Brunsai was first named and described by German paleontologist Werner Janensch in 1914 as Brachiosaurus Brunsai, based on several specimens recovered between 1909 and 1912 from the Tendaguru Formation near Lindi, in what was then German East Africa, today Tanzania. It is known from five partial skeletons, including three skulls and numerous fragmentary remains including skull material, some limb bones, vertebrae and teeth. It lived from 145 to 150 a million years ago, during the Kimmeridgian to Tithonian ages of the late Jurassic period. A famous specimen of Giraffatit and Brunsai mounted in Museum Far One Quarter on Iturkand is one of the largest, and in fact the tallest, mounted skeletons in the world as certified by the Guinness Book of Records. Beginning in 1909, Werner Janinch found many additional G. Bransai specimens in Tanzania, Africa, including some nearly complete skeletons, and used them to create the composite mounted skeleton seen today. In 1988, Gregory S. Paul noted that Brachiosaurus Bransai showed significant differences from the North American Brachiosaurus, especially in the proportions of its trunk vertebrae and in its more gracile build. Paul used these differences to create a subgenus he named Brachiosaurus bramsi. In 1991, George Olszewski asserted that these differences were enough to place the African Brachiosaurid in its own genus, simply Giraffatitan. Further differences between the African and North American forms came to light with a description in 1998 of a North American Brachiosaurus skull. This skull, which had been found nearly a century earlier, is identified as Brachiosaurus sp, and may well belong to B. altithorax. The skull is closer to Camrazorus in some features such as the form of the front teeth and more elongated and less hollowed out on top than the distinctive short-snouted and high-crested skull of Giraffatitan. The classification of Giraffatitan as a separate genus was not widely followed by other scientists at first as it was not supported by a rigorous comparison of both species. However, a detailed comparison was published by Michael Taylor in 2009. Taylor showed that Brachiosaurus bramsi differed from B. in almost every fossil bone that could be compared, in terms of both size, 
shape, and proportion, finding that the placement of Girafatitan in a separate genus was valid. Taylor found evidence of a sister relationship between Girafatitan and Brachiosaurus, although his analysis omitted other Brachiosaurids. A more recent study on Titanosauriform sauropods by D. places Girafatitan as sister to a clade containing Brachiosaurus and a tritomy of Abidosaurus, Cedrosaurus, and Gnenosaurus as shown below, Paleobiology, Brain. Girafatitan's brain measured about 300 km cubed, which, like those of other sauropods, was small compared to its massive body size. A 2009 study calculated its brain to body mass ratio at a low 0.62 or 0.79, depending on the size estimate used. Girafatitan is also similar to other sauropods in having an sacral enlargement above the hip, which some older sources misleadingly referred to as a second brain, but glycogen bodies are a more possible explanation. Nostril placement the placement of Girafatitan nostrils has been the source of much debate with Whitmer describing in science the hypothesized position of the fleshy nostrils in Girafatitan in as many as five possible locations. Comparing the nares of dinosaurs with those of with modern animals, he found that all species have their external nostril openings in the front, and that sauropods like Girafatitan did not have nostrils on top of their heads, but near their snouts. There has also been the hypothesis of various sauropods, such as Girafatitan, possessing a trunk. The fact that there were no narrow snouted sauropods tends to discredit such a hypothesis. Stronger evidence for the absence of a trunk is found in the teeth wear of Girafatitan, which shows the kind of wear that would result from biting and tearing off of plant matter rather than purely grinding, which would be the result of having already ripped the leaves and branches off with its trunk. Metabolism if Girafatitan was endothermic, it would have taken an estimated 10 years to reach full size, if it were instead poikilothermic, then it would have required over 100 years to reach full size. As a warm-blooded animal, the daily energy demands of Girafatitan would have been enormous. It would probably have needed to eat more than 182 kg of food per day. If Girafatitan was fully cold-blooded or was a passive bulk endotherm, it would have needed far less food to meet its daily energy needs. Some scientists have proposed that large dinosaurs like Girafatitan were gigantotherms. Environment and behavior The nostrils of Girafatitan, like the huge corresponding nasal openings in its skull, were long thought to be located on the top of the head. In past decades, scientists theorized that the animal used its nostrils like a snorkel, spending most of its time submerged in water in order to support its great mass. The current consensus view, however, is that Girafatitan was a fully terrestrial animal. Studies have demonstrated that water pressure would have prevented the animal from breathing effectively while submerged and that its feet were too narrow for efficient aquatic use. Furthermore, new studies by Lawrence Whitmer show that, while the nasal openings in the skull were placed high above the eyes, the nostrils would still have been close to the tip of the snout. References External links Media related to Girafatitan at Wikimedia Commons